What's up, guys? It's Solo back with another video, and the Golden State Warriors dynasty may be coming to an end. It might have already came to an end, and what I mean by this is that I don't think that this current Golden State Warriors team will be capable of winning another NBA Finals. Let's just be honest. I'm a Warriors fan. You guys see I'm wearing the Warriors jersey shirt or whatever you want to call it. I went to the NBA Finals game six when they won it in 2022 against the Celtics. I'm a big fan since like 2012, 20, 2011, around that time. And if you take a look at the schedule, they started off six and two. Now they're 10 and 14. The Warriors are not a good basketball team right now. They are not a good basketball team. If you're a Warriors fan watching this, I know there's going to be some Warriors fans. You got to look yourself in the mirror. You got to be real with what's going on. This is not the team. This is not a team that's capable of going far in the playoffs. And, and look, bro, they're four and 12 in their last 16 games. And I don't think like anything drastic is going to change. Like, if they keep playing the season out like this without making a lot of changes, without making a trade, without, you know, putting Clay on the bench or making these big decisions, which I'm going to talk about in a second. We're going to talk about possible trades, possible things that they need to do to actually start winning, which there's not many things they can do. It's going to be hard, but they're four and 12 in their last 16 games. That is not okay if we take a look at the western conference standings as you guys can see the golden state warriors are eight and a half games behind first now obviously they don't need to go for first but they need to at least get a playing spot they're in the bottom five grouping of teams with the jazz the grizzlies the trailblazers and the spurs some of the worst teams in the entire nba that is not a group that you want to be a part of and all the 10 teams above the warriors are good solid teams so, so they're gonna, someone's going to have to drop out of that 10 for the Warriors to obviously get in. And they're they're 11 and the Suns are 10, but they're like, they're three games back. They're three or four games out of the play-in. Like there's a big gap from that 10th team to that 11th seed, which is the Warriors. And like I said before, if the Warriors don't start making drastic changes, they are not going to even make the play-in. Like I just don't see it. I don't see it and, and it's not looking good. Obviously, when we talk about the Golden State Warriors dynasty, you have the big three. You have Stephen Curry, you got Klay Thompson, and you got Draymond Green. So real quick, let's talk about it. Stephen Curry, 29 points per game, five boards, five assists. There's not a lot we have to talk about him. He should be a Golden State Warrior for life, and he is the sole reason that this team is, is halfway decent. If Steph Curry's not on this team, Oh my God. I mean, this team is a lottery team. They are a team that, how many wins do they have? They have 10 right now in their first 24 games. I mean, they would probably have like four wins. Draymond's been suspended. He's been missing time. I mean, <laughs> this team would, they'd be in that range with the Pistons, the Spurs, and the Wizards. Stephen Curry is not the problem at all. Now, who is kind of a problem? is Draymond Green. The guy has been suspended, I believe, five times in the last year. Or not suspended, but ejected five times in the last year. I believe he served three three suspensions. He he might have gone for the Sabonis rib, rib cage kick. I'm not sure. But he's already got two suspensions this year. The one earlier for five games, and now he is suspended indefinitely. Draymond's got to go through, you know, courses. He's got to take classes, maybe go to therapy. I don't know what the NBA is making him do, but he has to meet these marks you know, for the team, for the Warriors, from to return to the Warriors, and then also meet these certain marks and things, you know, go to certain classes, like I said, before he can even play in an NBA game again. Draymond is not a huge problem, in my opinion. He is somewhat of a problem, but when it comes to his play on the court, you kind of know what you're going to get from him, and he's been playing that that Draymond role, and he's even, I feel like, been hitting threes at a better clip this year. He's, he's been knocking them down, so he's not really a problem, well, obviously he's a problem. You know what I'm saying? He, you can't be putting people in headlocks. You can't be, um, you know, slapping people across the face, getting suspensions left and right. That's not helping at all. So that that is a problem. But his play and his role on the team is not a huge problem. And I believe he is. This is year one of his four year extension, his four year contract. So I don't think he's going to be going anywhere, even if he does come back from the suspension in a few weeks or whatever. I don't think any team's really going to trade for him. And I don't think the Warriors are looking to really trade him. You know what I'm saying? He's not a, a person that is really 
in the picture when it comes to trading. I know everyone's probably thinking the Warriors are bad. They got to make trades. He's not going to get traded. Steph's not going to get traded. Draymond is not going to get traded. And as much as Warriors fans want Clay to be traded, well, I personally don't want him to be traded because he's done so much. I think it would be a disservice for they're not going to trade stuff and they're not going to trade jam as well they're also not going to trade clay because how much they've done for this franchise just because the warriors start playing not the best they're not going to trade him unless clay literally goes into the office and says guys like you can trade me like i'm cool with it like shit me off like it's the end like i'm i'm done like you know what i'm saying which that's not gonna happen either Clay is on the last year of his deal. He asked for an extension in the offseason, and the Warriors said no. They, they said, you're asking for too much money. We can't give you this. Also, Bob Myers is now gone. He's no longer the general manager. Mike Dunleavy Jr. is. So some decisions could be a little different. Obviously, Bob Myers, I feel like he kind of knew what was coming, the end of the dynasty. There's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made. You know, are you going to give Clay this extension? Are you going to trade Draymond down the line? How is this all going to end? Are you going to trade the young pieces like Kaminga? And Dunleavy's going to make the tough decisions. I don't know if Clay is going to be back next year. This is his last year, like I said. And if he keeps playing this way and the team's success, like it's not only about him. It's not only about Clay. But if this team misses the play in, you've got it. You've got to really think like. Is it smart to sign Clay to a, you know, 20, 25 million dollar deal? I don't know what he's asking for, but the deal he's on right now, I think it's like for like 35, maybe 40 mil. Like it's, it's a pretty good deal. And you're, there's no way you're bringing him back for that. So this might be the end. As, as much as it sucks, it might be the end of Clay Thompson in Golden State. But like I said before, I don't see them trading Clay at all. And when we talk about the gameplay of Clay Thompson, like I said, Draymond, Curry, I think they're playing fine. Obviously, Draymond can't be putting people in headlocks and all that. But when it comes to Clay, he's not the same. And you just got to face the facts. He has to face the facts. When people tell him, you're not the same, you got to stop shooting these shots. What does he say? He says, I have four rings and you don't. So I'm going to keep shooting these shots. And he's 33 years old now, turning 34 in February. Like, he's declining. He's declining. He's shooting, I think, 34% from three. He's always a 40 plus percent shooter, and I'm sure he'll get that up throughout the season. But you cannot keep shooting, you know, if, we, if we're going to compare it to 2K, you cannot keep shooting these smothered 100% contested shots because that's what he's shooting. He'll catch the ball and just shoot it up. It doesn't matter what defense is in front of him. There could be two defenders. Well, some, he doesn't always do it, but majority of the time, especially earlier in the year, He'd catch the ball and just shoot it over anybody. It doesn't matter what type of defense it is. That's just who he's been, you know, earlier in his career. And he's not that guy anymore. Of course, he's a he's a good he's a good three point shooter. And I think if Clay, this is one of the changes I think could help. Put Clay on the bench. He may not like it, but if he embraces that role off the bench, and I'll talk about what starting lineup I think they should run. But if Clay comes off the bench, think about it. That could be a really good sixth man. That, like, that could be his time to shine. Like, And I'm not saying he can't be in the closing lineup. He could be. He could be in the closing lineup, but maybe not the starting lineup. So when Curry comes out, or maybe there's a little overlap there in the first quarter, but Clay comes in and then bang, it's your offense, Clay. You can shoot these crazy, well, I'm, I don't want him to shoot crazy shots, but you know what I'm saying? It'll, I feel like take a little pressure off him if he comes off the bench. And as a Warriors fan, I'm gonna say it. I feel like Clay Thompson, has a little bit of an ego. I mean, I feel like everyone has an ego, but Clay keeps bringing up this four rings thing. You don't really see Steph talking about it. Draymond is really, you know what I'm saying? No one really talks about it, but Clay, whenever someone kind of bashes him or constructively criticism criticizes him, it kind of seems like he just brings up the four rings and says, look at my resume and all that type of stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he doesn't say it all the time, but that's what it seems like. And Clay's kind of got to drop that. He's kind of got to realize He's not the guy that he used to be. I know he thinks it, and that's good. You probably should think I'm the best. Every shot I'm going to shoot is going to go in and all that. But I feel like he's got to change up the game plan a little bit. He can't keep shooting these smothered shots. And I feel like if he if he doesn't, starts passing the ball more, maybe going to the rack more, which I don't know how much that's going to work out. But if he only shoots the actual good looks, 
He's immediately, I think, above a 40% three-point shooter. And I think this team, this team's success would be much better. I'm honestly shocked that he's still taking the shots that he's taking. And also, I got to give him his flowers. He had 30 points last night. I think he hit eight three-pointers. So I was thinking about making this video a few days ago, or maybe a week ago, when I first started the channel. This is one of the videos I knew I could, you know, make. Talking about the Warriors dynasty. He did just have a great game. So I got to give him his flowers. Hopefully this keeps up. If it keeps up and he starts going crazy, getting back to the old play, which he can get to, he hasn't been that this year. If he gets back to that, then yeah, start him. And all this is not a problem. But what we've seen so far, and it's been about, what is it? Tw almost 25 games, 24 games. You you can't play like this. It's not, it's not gonna equate to wins. Taking a look at the Warriors and their points per game. We got Curry with 29, Clay with 15, Wiggins with 12, Kaminga with pretty much 12, Sarge with... 11 and you guys can see the rest now what lineup do i think they should run because obviously the lineup of you know curry clay wiggins draymond and looney that's not working draymond's going to be suspended for a while so you can't have him in the lineup what is the best lineup going to be obviously you're going to start steph curry and this might be surprising to y'all but at the two i think brandon podzemski should be starting at the two and maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it doesn't. But you got to try it. You got to give it a little sample size and see how it works. So Curry at the one. Pajemski at the two. Pajemski, by the way, is shooting like 44% from three. Like, he's a good shooter. And he's a team player. We've heard him talk about his role. He said, what is he? Like a, a, a replacement tire or whatever. A spare tire. Like whenever they need him. If, if they need him to, you know, fill in for clay. Or if someone's, you know what I'm saying? He, he knows his role. And he, he calls himself a a spare tire so that's fire but yeah curry spare tire at the two then i guess and wiggins has not been playing good he has not had a good year he hasn't and if you've been watching this team you've been watching basketball you know that uh but with draymond out you could start him so curry spare tire wiggins kaminga i think we're gonna see some games with kaminga starting i i think it's time with all the problems we've had kaminga is the you know he has the brightest future on this entire warriors roster uh we're going to talk about him more in, in a second but yeah curry pozemski wiggins kaminga and i guess you have to start looney because this team lacks centers they have looney who's labeled as a forward which i i don't know that probably means i guess they don't label anyone as center but you can see they label him as a, as a forward but this team one center you got one center. The backup center minutes are going to Dario Sarge, who, by the way, has been actually playing good. He's been playing solid, but you, this team needs a center. That's one of the moves that this team needs to make. They need to trade for a center. Now, how are they going to do it? I don't think you trade Kaminga. There's one player that I am okay with you trading Kaminga for, and that is only if you can extend him because he only has one year left on his deal. It would be a rental. And that player... If y'all know some trade pieces or people that might get traded, Pascal Siakam. He's on the last year of his deal. And I wouldn't trade him straight up for like for, for Pascal just for one year. You can't do that. Kaminga, I think, is going to have a really bright future. I don't think you could really trade Pajemski. Um, Moody's been solid. I just don't know who you'd trade. Trace Jackson Davis, I think, will have a pretty good career. Maybe he could be in trade talks. But just... This team is probably going to have to make a trade if they want to go anywhere in the finals. I don't see this current roster going far in the playoffs. Like I, I think I, I meant to say playoffs before. Um, they're going to have to make a move. Again, you can try out different lineups, but it's probably not going to be great. Maybe it's better, but it's probably not going to be great. And I, I don't know. Clay's got to play better. Wiggins got to play better. Draymond, Draymond can't put people in chokeholds and be slapping people left and right. Chris Paul's been just okay not the best we didn't expect much from him but like i said before mike dunleavy jr is gonna have to make some big decisions do you bring back clay thompson as it stands right now i don't think they're gonna bring him back i don't obviously they're gonna give him an offer but to me the way clay comes off i think he loves golden state there's no obviously he loves golden state but I think that he knows he can get money. And I, I do think there might be a team out there that will offer him more than the Warriors are willing to give him. So if he wants the money, he'll be gone. And I, I feel like this could end bad for the for the Warriors and Clay. I hope it doesn't. 
I hope it ends on great terms. You know, if Clay goes somewhere else, someone's offering him more money. I hope he is, you know, okay with that. I don't want Clay to, to go somewhere else because the Warriors didn't offer him more money. And then later down the line, have this drama and this beef saying, yeah, it didn't end the way. Well, obviously, it didn't end the way he wanted. But him to kind of think that, you know, the Warriors owe him a crazy contract when he's you know at this stage of his career and then also with draymond we still got three and a half years of draymond left if they end up trading him i don't want the same thing to happen i feel like these are two players that are obviously very full of themselves they have reason to like i said or like we know they've been very good but if if they don't if it doesn't end on good terms I don't know how this is going to this is going to be in the future with Draymond Clay their relations with the Warriors. I think the I think Curry is probably going to be a warrior for life. I don't really see them moving on from him even if they suck. I don't think you really even trade him. I think you just suck with Steph Curry till he retires. But Steph Curry's got some really good years left, so I think you try some things if you don't if you, you know, can't re-sign Clay, free up a little money, go somewhere else with it, try and build around Curry in these last few years. You're going to have to. You got to make sacrifices. Whether that means trading Draymond, which I don't know if that's in the plans. I don't really think so. Or letting go of Klay Thompson or maybe trading some of these young guys like Kaminga, Moody, Pajemski, maybe it's Trace Jackson Davis. I don't know. But you've, you've got to try to make sacrifices and do something to build around Curry. And again, I don't really want them to trade Kaminga. I think he's going to be great. But if you have a really good deal and you think, you know, this guy that you're bringing in you're gonna have a chance to to go to the finals of course you got to do it but i don't know who they could bring in that would be like yeah we feel really comfortable with this team winning the nba finals if we trade for this guy so i don't really see them trading kaminga barzemski's been great i don't see them trading him again maybe trace jackson davis maybe moody if they really find a star but I don't know. This team's just kind of in a weird state right now. I love the conversations that always go on in the comment section. So let me know in the comments. What do you think the Warriors need to do? Do they need to change up the lineup? Do they need to trade blank for blank? Do they need to trade Kaminga for a center? Let me know. What move do you think the Warriors desperately need to make that will make them a much better team? Of course, some of you guys haven't. We're grinding on this channel, putting out daily videos. I'll see you all in the next one. Click the video on your screen right here if you guys haven't seen it yet.